In terms of our future features, uh, further enhancements uh, include bringing those conformal metals and models, both solids and sheets, uh, to, uh, um, to, our, to our library and release them to the field, and working on improving the setup time. Uh, longer term features, areas that we're, we're looking at expanding, um, include support for the next generation of NVIDIA Kepler Maxwell GPUs, as well as support for AMD's Firestream Fusion uh, and Fusion processors using OpenCL. Uh, we also uh, have foreseen that, uh, that uh, Intel is also entering this space, um, that is the, the multi-core, the mini multi-core space. Uh, with their, their Knight's Corner, Knight's Ferry processors, which we're working uh, with them to support as well. In terms of uh, FDTD features, um, we're also uh, actively looking into uh, subgrading, uh, which could provide uh, some significant performance benefits, both in size and performance uh, in our libraries. And in addition to that, we'll also be planning to add uh, solvers like the ADI FDTD solver, as well as uh, MOM and FEM solvers to our libraries. And the main message from this slide is that we're continuing and always uh, going to be investing in our, in our features and, and making sure that our libraries are optimized for all of these different platforms um, to distribute to, uh, to users and, uh, and potential uh, customers. This slide here shows the performance that uh, we're currently seeing on NVIDIA's latest uh, hardware. And uh, this, is, this is the Fermi architecture that was released by NVIDIA in about the fall of uh, 2009. Availability came in about early 2010. So what this performance curve is showing is the performance of um, uh, an FDTD simulation. This simulation um, has, uh, it has a CPML boundary attached to it. Its size is shown along the x-axis at the bottom. And the performance metric uh, measured in megacells per second, or the throughput, is, uh, is on the y-axis. Uh, we've put a red reference line, which shows the reference CPU-only performance, um, so meaning that you're running exclusively using uh, a two-socket uh, processor, or sorry, two-socket uh, motherboard with two processors on the, on the system. So the blue line shows the performance that you would see with one GPU, and that would be the C2070 from NVIDIA. And this is our library um, doing the GPU acceleration, showing a throughput of about 750 uh, megacells, uh, compared to, say, between 1 to 200 uh, megacells per second on the CPU only. So showing a multiplier of, of uh, 5 or, well, about 5x. In the green lines case, what it's doing is it's able to extend the, the uh, size of the simulation that's supported on the GPUs. And it's using two Fermi cards to do this. Again, uh, you can see that at the higher end, it's getting up to about 1.5 gigacells, or, or almost double what you'd see with, with two cards. And in the last case, uh, you have four GPUs. And this is in their server rack uh, mounted form factor, the S2070. And again, that gets, uh, gets close to 3 gigacells, say 2.75 gigacells on very large simulations, about 400 megacells. Um, this is about the size that you would put within one node. If you want it bigger than that, then you would start to look towards a cluster-based solution. But either way, you can see that the GPU does offer a compelling performance advantage um, over CPU-only uh, only, uh, libraries. Um, our library, to be... Uh, to be uh, clear as well, does include a multi-core CPU only solver as well for both reference and, uh, and the fact that we want to support uh, high performance uh, CPU, uh, CPU libraries as well. Um, so not just a GPU, but it does have a, a software uh, component uh, as well that's available. So this slide is, uh, is hinting at the fact that there's a lot of data out there in terms of performance um, with GPUs and not GPUs and clusters and, and uh, other, other hardware architectures. And what's important about, uh, about this slide is, and just in general when determining uh, the performance of these libraries is making sure to compare, uh, to compare well, apples to apples, uh, making sure that everything is, is uh, aligned, especially on the hardware platform, uh, as well as the simulation. So you, for example, you may see simulation performance metrics that do not have any boundary types or have very simple boundary types, or perhaps they have no materials as well. 
Um, and as mentioned, the previous slide, for example, showed a more typical case. It had, it had say, 16 plus materials, and it had it did have a boundary type uh, for an absorbing boundary condition. Also dependent on the simulation size and orientation, which will also affect the runtime. Obviously, the hardware used, what version of GPU, and of course, uh, what uh, what platform is it running on? What uh, what processors is it using? Uh, how much memory is there in the system? Um, that in and of itself is actually still insufficient. Uh, knowing the OS driver uh, and library versions of NVIDIA's, uh, NVIDIA's products um, also have an impact on, on the performance because um, there is variation from driver to driver. Uh, also, are there observation regions in the simulation? Um, observation regions require an exchange of information to and from the GPU, which can, uh, which can start to, uh, to slow down performance as well. And is post-processing uh, measured in the simulation runtime? And this is these, uh, these algorithms, uh, such as DFT or near to far, uh, wouldn't uh, necessarily be run on the GPU, but would be included in the overall runtime. And of course, is there any disk access? Is there any information that's being written to or from the, the hard drive? And for real world simulations, uh, given, uh, given a simulation and a specified platform, uh, Accelerator's FDTD library or engine is the fastest today on the market. We also have a performance uh, white paper uh, available with our libraries which uh, help our users um, understand how, their, how various factors or various inputs on their simulation influence their run times end to end. Um, they include uh, tips to ensure that you get the best performance um, so that, for example, let's say you do need to do a lot of reads, are there ways that uh, maybe you can uh, improve, uh, improve the performance while still being able to do, uh, being able to do some reads? So we document that uh, in our Acceler FDTD performance guide. And that's uh, applicable to uh, pretty much all FDTD simulations and, and packages. And you can uh, contact sales for, for more information about that. And I believe you can also sign up for that on our website as well. So in conclusion, uh, advantages of Accelerator's FDTD library is that uh, we have uh, over 20 years of e electromagnetics experience and uh, in particular coupled or combined with the fact that we've been working with GPUs for over six years makes us uh, the industry leader for accelerated uh, FDTD libraries. It's robust, uh, fully tested and commercially used uh, by industry. Uh, we cover the majority of the industry uh, required features for doing electromagnetic simulation and it's the fastest solution on the market. If you have any additional questions or require more information, feel free to contact us at sales at or you can contact me directly at chris.mason at Thank you.